Great, welcome everyone. My name is Alex Puttafint and I'm the Press Secretary to the Minister of Justice and Solicitor General. So thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, today we're uh, we're providing an update on the Coots blockade. Um, Deputy Commissioner Zablocki will provide us an update and speak first, followed by the Acting Minister of Justice and Solicitor General, General Sonia Savage. Once that's all done, we will open it up for questions in the order that they are asked. So just a polite reminder, uh, housekeeping before we get started to uh, if you can ensure that you're you're muted when you're not speaking um, and uh, ensure that your camera is off until you're asking a question. This will help teams run a little more efficiently. So I'll now turn it over to uh, the commanding officer of Alberta RCMP, Deputy Commissioner Curtis Zablocki. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'd like to update Albertans about what has been taking place at Coots border crossing and Alberta RCMP operations that are occurring in response to these events. Since the onset of the protests and blockades at Coots border crossing, our operations have been focused on ensuring events take place peacefully, safely, and lawfully. Frustrated, and I can understand why. I want to assure you there are very definite actions taking place. Those actions begin with considering the safety of all involved. These safety concerns are very real and unnecessary risks will not be taken. As the police service leading this operation, it's our discretion as to how and when enforcement is used. It's our goal to ensure any actions are used to advance resolution not to increase the volatility and potential for violence in Coots or anywhere else in the province. Since this illegal activity began, we've been working to establish an operational environment where we're confident we can maintain the peace and safety of all involved. Our operational priorities beyond that have been to keep the border, a vital economic trade point for Albertans and Canadians open for crossing and to ensure citizens in the area affected have safe passage through the protest area. Unimpeded emergency services and free flow of goods and services to their communities. We've managed through continued dialogue to achieve those goals without violence or escalating tensions at the sites. Since the beginning of this event, We've made some significant progress on those goals, including maintaining border crossings, assisting citizens caught in the convoys inadvertently, ensuring open access to the community of Coots for its citizens, and assisting U.S. truck drivers in returning to the United States. This has been accomplished without full shutdown of the border and without violence. I can appreciate that there's public discussion about why this blockade hasn't been forcefully ended and why the vehicles haven't simply been towed away. Moving vehicles like these require special equipment and operators. From the onset of this event, we actively engaged towing companies to assist. Unfortunately, they were unwilling to become involved when it was implied that helping law enforcement with removal really damaged their livelihoods into the future. We're still exploring ways to remove vehicles from the sites and we'll continue to exhaust all avenues as long as this illegal activity continues. Make no mistake, there are illegal activities taking place at these protest sites that violate both criminal code and provincial laws. We've seen activities that are dangerous and reckless and that are having a very profound negative effect on Albertans who live in the area. The impact to the lives and livelihoods of those who depend on safe, unimpeded travel in the area is significant. We are investigating, there will be charges, and this does not end when the road is cleared. Our investigations began when the illegal activity began and we'll work with our investigative power using all of the tools we have available to ensure those who broke the laws are held accountable. It is time to end the illegal activity in Coots and allow for safe, 
free flowing and unimpeded travel. I'm asking all of those who continue to organize this protest to move activities to a state that is lawful and safe for all involved. Thank you very much, Deputy Commissioner. So I'll now turn it over to uh, the Acting Minister of Justice and Solicitor General, Mr. Savage. Well, thank you. The blockade at the Coots border crossing is a rapidly evolving situation. One that poses distinct challenges for law enforcement, as you've just heard. That said, it's far from the first act of public protest that has taken place in the province of Alberta. And our government's policy towards such act, acts remains unchanged. To repeat what we've said on several occasions, Alberta's government will always stand up for people's fundamental democratic rights to protest, so long as they respect the rule of law and the free operation of society. The constitutional rights to freedom of assembly and expression have reasonable limits. When protesters threaten public safety, disrupt the public peace, or prevent Albertans from accessing vital infrastructure, then they open themselves up to potential action from law enforcement. We believe that the Coots blockade has crossed this line. It has severely inconvenienced lawful motorists. It's prevented commercial goods from reaching their destination. And it has the potential to impede emergency vehicles from reaching people in need of aid. The situation has become intolerable and it has to end. Enforcement decisions are always the responsibility of law enforcement agencies. It's up to police to determine how they will address the blockade and how they will enforce the law. Those part participating in this illegal blockade could potentially face charges or action under an, any number of laws, including the Federal Criminal Code, the Provincial Traffic Safety Act, and the Criti Critical Infrastructure Defense Act, which was enacted in 2020. The Critical Infrastructure Defense Act carries significant consequences, not just fines, but possible jail time as well. I've heard calls from Albertans for an end to the blockade. I share their frustration, and I share the desire of many Albertans to return life to normal. The RCMP and local law enforcement agencies are on site. They're sharing information and working in tandem to control the situation and maintain public safety. But what action they may take against the various particip participants in this blockade is at their independent discretion. I also want to point out that it takes time to conduct criminal, criminal investigations. But again, I trust authorities to lay appropriate charges where the evidence provides reasonable grounds for doing so. As for the participants in this blockade, I'm sure that many of them joined this protest believing that it would be a highly visible but ultimately peaceful way to make their views heard. However, they need to recognize that this protest is not lawful. What's more, it's causing hardship and inconvenience for thousands of law-abiding Albertans, including the vast majority of truckers. To put this in context, there are approximately 300,000 truckers operating 60,000 commercial vehicles in the province compared to only a few dozen vehicles involved in this blo blockade. So I call upon those involved in the blockade to respect the rule of law and to comply with any necessary action of law enforcement that must be taken. Thank you and we'll look forward to your questions. Thank you very much, Minister. So we will now have time uh, for some questions. Um, if you could uh, raise your hands uh, and uh, we'll call on our operator to uh, call them out in order. Um, just a, a few housekeeping uh, items, if you could identify your name and outlet prior to asking the question, and the questions will be one question, one follow-up. If you could also identify who the question is for, whether uh, Deputy Commissioner Curtis Blocky or the Minister, um, that'd be great. So thank you. We'll go to our first question operator. 
Good afternoon. Our first question comes from Catherine Grykowski with Alberta Today. Go ahead, Catherine. Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much for, for taking my question. Earlier today, we heard from the federal government that um, resources are being provided from, from Ottawa in the, in the form, I believe, of officers. Can you detail, is that going to be officers? Is it going to be equipment? What are you getting from Ottawa to assist in this operation? We uh, made the request uh, a few several days ago for for the additional resources, but uh, on the ground, I think Curtis would be best to respond to that. Yeah, thank you, Minister. I, I, I can advise that we we have uh, drawn resources uh, from our neighbors to the west, from British Columbia, drawn RCMP resources to assist with the uh, with the situation at at Coots. Did you have a follow up? I'll I'll. I'll seed my time. Thank you. Our next question uh, is from Amber Gosselin with the uh, Western Standard. Go ahead, Amber. This is a question for the minister, please. Mi minister, have you consulted with members of your rural caucus about this move as some have been seen supporting the truckers? Well, th well, thank you. I've had several conversations with my my colleagues, and as you know, uh, uh, MLAs do not have any ability to negotiate on behalf of the the, gov the government in this situation. This is a very volatile and uh, and uh, evolving situation, and they do not have authority to negotiate with the protesters on behalf of the government of Alberta. In fact, uh, that would set a very very dangerous precedent of negotiating with people that are breaking the law or potentially threatening to break the law uh, who are asking for government policy changes in return for them stopping breaking the law. That sets a dangerous precedent and would abrogate the rule of law. Do you have a follow up? Yes, I do. If you are successful in getting the injunction what what exactly will the RCMP do to enforce it? Will, will they seize all the vehicles? Will they arrest all the protesters? Will everyone be fined? Well, first of all, we haven't applied for an injunction. The uh, province does have the ability to apply from, for an injunction from the courts, but we haven't done so. Right now, uh, we don't see the necessity of doing so at the present time. Situation is evolving, but uh, applying for an injunction is an additional tool that we could bring if it would help uh, bring a conclusion to this, this uh, and bring a conclusion to the blockade. But at present time, we have not applied for an injunction. Thank you. Our next question comes from an individual um, under CBC Edmonton. If you can uh, identify yourself, please, and ask your question. Go ahead once more for CBC Edmonton. All right, I'll move on to Carrie Tate. Go ahead, Carrie, if you can identify your agency, please. Hi, thanks for taking my question. It's Carrie Tate with the Globe and Mail. Uh, for the RCMP Deputy Commissioner, I'm just wondering if I understood some this correctly. Are you saying that there's nothing you can do to remove the tractors and trucks and vehicles at the site? So in that context, uh, th that is currently a challenge for us, given I'll say uh, obviously the, the type of vehicles that are located uh, on the roadway at the site. And, uh, and also the number of vehicles that are, are located there. So yes, uh, the, the challenge is in the context of uh, acquiring proper resources uh, and I'll say heavy uh, equipment to be able to, uh, to, to move those uh, uh, trucks and, and tractor trailers. And sorry to follow up on that. Doesn't that just sort of give the, the protesters carte blanche to stay as long as they want? Not necessarily, of course, there'll be many factors I would say that uh, would potentially impact uh, uh, how long they they decide to, to stay and what we do uh, in that same context. Of course, we've been working, you know, really since day one engaged with them. 
And uh, and as you're likely aware, you know, on, on day one, there were over 250 uh, units on the ro roadway there. So uh, through the course of this past week, and, and I'll say it's been gradual process, uh, or progress, pardon me, uh, today there's uh, in the neighbourhood of 50 uh, units. So, um, you know, there has been, there certainly has been some uh, some progress that way. And are you just targeting the leaders of this movement when you were talking about your investigations, or is this a sweeping net covering the hundreds of people who have visited? Yeah, we are. We will be investigating uh, all that have been contravening contravening the laws uh, at that particular location at the protest sites. And uh, I don't have a number for you uh, as to what that exactly looks like, uh, but those investigations uh, are ongoing. And of course. Um, you know, uh, as, as the minister referred, uh, we're using uh, legislation from the Criminal Code, the Critical Infrastructure Defense Act, the Tra Traffic Safety Act as well too, and, and uh, we're confident that charges will be laid. Thank you. We'll now go to Audrey uh, Niveau with uh, Radio Canada. Go ahead, Audrey. Hi, thanks for taking my question. It's for Mr. Zablocki. You said very decisively that there, well, police officers have uh, witnessed uh, illegal activity. Can you flesh out what they've seen? Yeah, I, I'll just comment in a very uh, obvious and, and general sense, perhaps, you know, the uh, the parking of vehicles uh, as such the situation that we have at Coots uh, on the roadway is, is uh, in fact, a violation of, of different pieces of, of legislation. And as a follow-up, I, I understand that this situation is difficult and you can't just move the vehicles, but to an outside observer, 11 days after the start of this blockade, this, this doesn't really seem as progress. So how, how can you justify, today you seem very confident, you say there's progress, but it doesn't look like it to an outsider. Well, you know, and as I, as I highlighted the progress in the context of the number of vehicles that that were, uh, you know, are currently on the roadway in, in contrast to the number that uh, were there uh, several days ago. Uh, I would say that is certainly progress, but we've also, uh, you know, been engaged with uh, with the protesters in the context of our community conflict uh, um, management uh, group uh, employees. So trained RCMP members, uh, trained in mediation and, uh, you know, in protests such as this and another protests, they're often the first uh, resources that we deploy and and with the task of or uh, a focus or a goal of engaging with the protesters, opening up communications, uh, which was certainly done in this case and and those communications and and I'll say that relationship that was built has helped facilitate uh, some of the removal of the trucks. And I would also say likely help facilitate and, and prevent uh, potential uh, rising of tensions, uh, escalation of emotions and such uh, on the lines as well too. So uh, I'll maybe stop there. We'll now go to uh, Dean Bennett with the Canadian Press. Go ahead, Dean. Thanks uh, very much. I guess first question for uh, uh, the RCMP then. Simplistically, I mean, uh, you're, you've got a whole bunch of people there breaking the law. Why don't you just arrest them? What? Uh, obviously there's more to it than that, but uh, what, why not? Well, you're you're right, Dean. There is there's absolutely uh, more to it than that. Um, you know, clearly, you know, we want this. Uh, we want to resolve this situation in a in a safe and and peaceful way, if if that's uh, possible. So, of course, that's going to be our our first approach. And uh, as I've mentioned earlier, uh, we've seen some uh, some progress. We've been able to manage that through to this particular point. And, uh, you know, but I would say at the same time, you know, um, we, we have ongoing communications. We have a uh, lane of traffic open in both directions, allowing the flow of, uh, of commercial traffic, of, of passenger vehicles as well, uh, the flow, the economy, uh, goods and services. Uh, so it, it, there has been progress uh, in that context. And um, we'll continue to work on that until we get a complete resolution uh, in this particular situation. Thank you. A follow up question for the minister, please. Is there anything you can do or are contemplating doing in a civil manner or something to do with, I mean, we know who these people are. Is there something that you might want to do um, 
I mean, you have control over uh, driver's licenses. You have, I mean, you, you, could, you could sue them civilly. What are your options and are you considering any civil options, Minister? Well, right now, uh, the enforcement op uh, options are in the purview of the RCMP and uh, the Crown. Prosecutors would be contemplating uh, charges. Uh, we are also uh, looking at the potential of, an in of a civil injunction. Um, we're, we're gathering information and evidence in preparation of one. It's not necessary at this point in time uh, as we're trying to de-escalate the situation and give give the RCMP the ability and the room to uh, to come to a peaceful resolution of this. It is an option. Uh, we, we also are looking at various options under the Emergency Management Act. As well, you've heard there's several charging options that the RCMP have under the Traffic, Traffic Safety Act, the Critical Infrastructure Defense Act, and criminal uh, the criminal code. There's also uh, the Civil Forfeiture Act. Those uh, property that's involved in the commission of a crime can be seized and forfeited to the Crown. So those are pretty expensive vehicles that are on the side of the road, tractors and other equipment that could be uh, could could be seized and forfeited to the Crown. But as I said, this is a very volatile and evolving situation, and uh, decisions are being being made on the ground by the RCMP. We're giving them the tools to to get to a peaceful resolution in the public interest and to ensure safety. And this will be Thank our you. last question. Thank you, Dean. And uh, we'll finally go to Josh Ulrich, uh, Ulrich or Ald Aldrich, excuse me, with uh, the Calgary Herald. Go ahead, Josh. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, this is for the RCMP. Uh, you've alluded to a few times throughout this that you're scared about the potential violence and the safety issues uh, that could come from taking, I guess, more aggressive actions to break up the uh, uh, to breaking up the blockade. Why, why do you believe that there'd be potential for violence and big safety issues uh, coming out of more aggressive actions to break up or progressive actions to break up this blockade? Well, I think, uh, you know, of, of course, we always uh, we always at, uh, attempt to look beyond the current situation and and uh, certainly consider the impact that our decisions uh, whether it be in enforcement decisions or other decisions can have on on uh, on the particular circumstances. So we uh, we look beyond that. Uh, you know, we 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 are always cognizant, uh, in in particular in protests, right? Especially when they're illegal protests, like this one is, of the potential for uh, escalation, escalation of emotions, uh, including uh, the possibility of of violence. People are on this roadway. Uh, because um, they feel they have a cause to uh, uh, to to bring forward, and um, you know if if they are dug in on that cause, that can often uh, result in in decisions that perhaps uh, they might make that um, are concerning in the context of of criminal activity that we've seen, uh, violations of other uh, provincial statutes. But uh, again, it, it it's really about. Um, it's, re it's really about being able to uh, be certain that um, there's uh, level heads prevail at the end of the day and and uh, eliminate any potential of violence as, as things move forward. Uh, my follow up, uh, we're not, I believe, day 11 of this blockade. This is the first um, press conference we've had on it. it. Why is it taking so long to have this type of a media availability to discuss what's going on, to be able to cut through a lot of the innuendo and potential misinformation? Because I know that's been an issue down there. Why is it taking so long to have one of these availabilities and will there be more availabilities going forward? Yeah, yes, um, you know, we've uh, we've had uh, communications, uh, our comps folks on site, uh, for a number of days now down at Coots, and we've been providing updates uh, through the media, uh, through the on-site uh, communications folks. Uh, recently, the minister and I uh, decided it would be appropriate to uh, to conduct uh, an availability in this context, and uh, and here you have us. Uh, 